Thank you very much. It's, it's a very special moment for me for two reasons. One, uh, when I got up this morning, I saw that the European flag was running high at the UCC. And you don't see that very often in Europe, uh, that the flag of the European Union is there with promise and uh, the pride of this institution. The second one is that uh, I think it's the first time in my life that I have my family here. So there's my wife. There's two of my children, there's another one but they're there. And so it's, uh, it's very good by the, because the little one always asks me, Daddy, what do you do for a living? <laughs> so that's what I do. Um, and the story, my story with Ireland uh, is, is really uh, one of a country that I consider like mine. And I think that I've opened or being at opening of uh, more buildings here than in my own country. Uh, last year I was uh, here with uh, Commissioner Phil Hogan, my colleague Phil Hogan, uh, at uh, Chagas Research Center, where we opened a building at Moore Park. But uh, today is, is more special because uh, the university uh, has decided to honor me today, and so it's a, it's a real special day for me and for all the family. For many outside of the Emerald Isle, Ireland is the embodiment of the smart uh, economy. It's a country in which the economic case has been made and won uh, for a high level education and for strong ambitions in research and innovation. When I look at what you've done in FP7, that you were able to get more than 600 million euros of uh, the taxpayers' money of the European Union for this country, I'm proud of Ireland. And I'm even more proud when I see that your target for Horizon 2020 is basically doubling up this amount. And that's because I think that you find the right mix of getting to the future with an open mind in terms of science, in terms of innovation, and in terms of innovation. And being in Cork, uh, really I understood that because when I went along the building and seeing all these people, that mix in between disciplines, that mix in between business and university, uh, is exactly what we want, is exactly where innovation and science will come. Uh, I was uh, just now on the on, uh, upstairs uh, with all these medical doctors that were not anymore alone, they were with engineers, engineers <laughs> like me. And so I was very proud to see that today, I mean, the future of health is also about engineering, and the future of engineering is also about medicine, is about social sciences, is about really being at the intersection of disciplines. And then, I mean, I think that the region here is an example. If you look at the companies in ICT, you have Intel, you have Logitech, you have the Apple campus, of course, but then you have pharmaceuticals, you have Novartis, you have JSK, all around this city, all around Cork. But more than companies, I think that Ireland, for me, has been an inspiration. And when you are a politician, you sometimes need inspiration to translate the messages to people in a nice and easy way. Because people don't understand sometimes why you're doing it. Why do we do it? Who's the people that are changing the world? And uh, one year ago, I was in Milan, and I had the great pleasure to give the prize of the youngest innovator of Europe to uh, an Irish uh, young uh, man called Marco Dowd. And he's 16, so he's not even at university. And for me, it has been an inspiring story that science is more than universities and that science today is centered on the user and the passion of that user. And that young guy uh, is uh, basically the son of a farmer and he loves agriculture. And so at some point he was trying to help his father and trying to get, how can I get high productivity of a seed? And so he started perforating the seeds. And he got to the conclusion that that would increase the yield of the production. And we thought that was such an amazing thing at that young age, uh, he's not even at university, that for me it has been one of my really inspirational stories from this young guy. I've seen him uh, not too long ago, and I think that Professor Murphy told me that he's going to be around eventually today. So, one of the things that I would urge you here is that tell your story, tell the story of UCC, tell the story of this building, 
because you have such a strong history of top-class education in R&D, from George Boole, uh, who transformed the way we think mathematics. You know, I think that from an engineering student like me, George Boole is such an inspiration. To Mary Ryan, who was the first woman in Ireland and Great Britain to hold the position of professor. She was from here. The strength of UCC has been maintained to present, and out of the 7,000 organizations that take part in our research uh, programs, UCC is in the top 50. So you should be very proud. And I, looking at what I've seen today, I think that the secret sauce for being at that top 50 uh, on 7,000 uh, number of organizations that fight for this funding, the fact that you're there, I think that is your ability, uh, the ability of the president, the ability of all the professors to go the extra mile supporting people with good ideas. The people I've met today that I went around, some of them were professors, but a lot of them were not professors. Some of them were academic, but some of them were just people that want to do a business and want to go ahead in life. And they came to me, the ones I met upstairs at Ignite, telling me, look, I had the idea, but I couldn't do it without Ignite. I couldn't do it without the support of the university. So this is just one of the elements of Gateway UCC that uh, really is such a comprehensive program to support new startups, knowledge-based companies that I wanted to tell you that is probably one of the best examples that I've seen so far. I'm really impressed with the number of companies, with the 40 companies that have been here, some of them that I've just visited. And the building basically is now the largest building at UCC. And so for me it's an honor to be opening such a large building that will stay forever and forever as an example of the three things that I believe uh, for the future. Open innovation, open science, and open to the world. When I went up the stairs, I also remarked that a lot of the people were actually originally not from here, from Ireland. I've been observing. And that is amazing, and it's great, that in a time where people in some parts of Europe think that it's better to close borders, that it's better to stay alone, you put the statement that you don't think so because you need for better science to be open to the world. And so uh, when I went around, I saw people that I immediately recognized that would come from other parts of Europe or other parts of the world. And so you are also here making history of making that as a point uh, in your building and in your university. At a moment like this, looking up at uh, a building which will house so much knowledge, so much talent and ambition, I think of all the hope that goes into a project like this. It's not just a building, it's your desire to teach, your desire to support your students and give them more than just a degree. To support your staff and offer them exciting opportunities and careers. You can't help but be really excited at a moment like this. Excited for the potential. And I think Professor Murphy, Murphy said, you should not be afraid. You should look into the future without fear. And I think that as a former uh, professor of mine and uh, the dean of uh, Harvard used to say, a big part of your success is the part of you that is willing to fail. And I think that in your university, the companies that are here, the professors that are here, they are the ones that are helping you to fail, to fail better, and to get better results. So I look forward to hearing about the work that is happening at the UCC. I'm looking forward to you to tell me more stories, so I can tell those stories in a way that people understand. I look forward to seeing you in more European projects, working to solve some of our society's problems and some of the world's greatest mysteries. So thank you very much for being such a great example of open innovation, of open science, and openness to the world. We need you. Thank you.